a slight drizzle, like an icy drizzle. That's fun. The sign says AHR. I think we're in the right place. Still don't have a coffee or breakfast plan, but we're, we're here. This is the main goal. So I gotta go upstairs to the press area to pick up my stuff there. I can't sign in to the regular check-in. All right, these people are awesome. Breakfast, coffee, badge, set for the day. Wrap this up. We'll go start touring the show floor uh, here in a few minutes. I'm gonna... This is pretty neat, I mean, check this out. They got a whole, whole little shebang here. All that going on. Anyway. So I get, it's uh, currently right about eight. I get a little bit early access to the floor. So I'm gonna hit it, do a quick walk around. Uh, and then I may start hitting some of my stops early if I can. I took the time to do a walk around. I've got a scope, it'll kind of lay the land. I see a lot of R32. I know 454B was gonna be real popular, but uh, obviously 32 was as well. I'm really seeing on the VRF equipment specifically that uh, they're really pushing more the 32 side. So that's interesting. And I'm happy to see that at least there's some consistency along like types of equipment. So I'm, I'm happy with that. It's kind of a weird thing to be recognized a lot of places and just so many people you've never met in your life that just know who you are and start talking and it's okay like i don't have a problem with it at all uh i just it's it, it, it it's just a different feeling uh it's, it's just not something it, i don't know how to explain it to you uh let me spin this around let me show you some of this floor And with AHR as the background, it's a perfect time to thank today's sponsor, which is CSG Compressor Solutions Group. It's Houston Hermetics and American Hermetics based out of Dallas. Thank you, Jake Little and the team for just being a great partner. It's been a fun relationship. I really look forward to working with these guys. If you need any kind of compressor solutions for whatever you've got going on, reach out to them. They're great at what they do. They have some wonderful tech support. Please utilize them as, a, as the resource that they are. Let's go see Chris with the uh, Parker Sporlin booth. Go have a chat with him on his channel. Hi. Hey, hey, hi. How you doing, guys? <laughs> Catch me off guard. <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole point. How's it going, bud? How you doing today? Doing good. All right. So what are we doing? Show me here. Set this over here. Organized chaos. <laughs> this is organized chaos. Hey. hey. Is there any other way? No. No. There's not. And okay. if if I was lying to you, I'd tell you that everything went smooth and perfect this morning, but it didn't. <laughs> it's all good though. We got to figure it out. So. All right. We've got some pretty neat little models sitting here. Let me check these out. Look like they're limited to almost Lego. Actually, that is Lego. <laughs> So we're starting to see a lot of these Addisons get in. We've installed a few of them, but they're starting to become fairly popular alternatives. I've got a handful of buildings that have them now. It's like a tower fan exhibit. Get into a baby model here. The front area definitely gets swarmed first and then they all start moving towards the back. Hmm, check this out.
so far out of all the exhibits I've seen today, that is by far the most convincing. Just showing off there. Look at her. The one thing that's been slightly disappointing is I want, I, I was hoping to see even bigger stuff than this here. Like what's here is plenty big, don't get me wrong, but like it's not near as big as it gets. So I guess at the same time, like I'm expecting overkill and they like, you gotta be reasonable somewhere. I wonder if they have their retrofit kits on display. I don't see them. I was hoping they'd have some of those retros, you know, they're, they're actually, Blimos have got amazing actuators, so I, I could recommend them any day, but their retrofit kits for old globe valve setups is quite, quite amazing. Anyway, we got Bell and got, let's still get some pump. All right, so Lockvar's got some pretty fun toys hanging around. They did bring out some of their commercial line too, which I'm excited about. This is pretty neat. I haven't actually seen a cutaway of uh, one of these combustion chambers before. Ooh, they've got a uh, branch box. They also see a little piping. So, outdoor units feed to the Interesting. Control. Check this out. Oh, this isn't just a regular branch selector. So this is actually quite fascinating. They have integrated uh, water, the hydronic system, in with a VRF branch controller. I did not know this existed. Well, it just goes to show you, don't think you're seeing a lot because ultimately you're gonna find yourself in a place where suddenly water and VRF start to mix. I mean, I already knew we had water cooled, uh, you know, VRF on the Mitsubishi side, but it looks like now they're starting to tie in chill water uh, into the VRF and then still have like heating capacity through the heat pump side of it. So yeah, it's interesting. Looks like Samsung's up to it too. So we've got a regular pipe into a heat exchanger of some kind. Yeah, look at that. They got a plated, and we can turn that into a water. Huh. Well, welcome to the new world, guys. So that Samsung booth is really cool. They've got a VRF hydronic chiller that they've come out with at this point. Really interesting. I did a bit on it, so there'll be a video coming where I talk more about it. But yeah, it just is shocking to me. I did not see. Uh, VRF going this hard into integrating hydronics. There's a lot of talk around Fujitsu in the VRF market. Let's see what they've got on display. Well, they've got that on display, but most of what they have is their mini splits, but they do have a heat recovery, you know, VRF. So there's that. Let's go talk to Daikin. So now we're starting to talk here. Here's some chillers. Any Fascinating. Daikin has come out with a low pressure dual compressor. Really interesting. No, you're good. Thank you. I didn't expect them to do that. So they're using looks like 123 or 1233. Like that. Both connections facing up. What are they using? 1233 ZDE. Huh. So this is a magnetic ring at that. Wow, they went all out. Check this out. Plus an economizer. I mean, obviously, I, I would expect them to show up with it fully loaded. So this looks like some kind of flash. I'm not familiar with this series. We got a liquid level sensor here from the looks of it. We have three EEVs. Condenser coming down. So this is going to our flash. We've got our pulling off the top of the flash tank or the economizer, as they would call it. Coming out the bottom, flash over into the EVAP. Wow, okay, yeah. So monitoring. So we would be controlling everything probably based off of liquid level set point to gauge where we set the valves then. Okay, this place is packed. So I've made it about halfway, a little over halfway actually, but it's 12 o'clock, I gotta take a break. It's, it's a lot, a lot going on. When we come back, We've got uh, JCI with the York Chillers. We've got uh, Carrier, Carlisle, some Copeland stuff. We got some really good, nice, bigger stuff. I know they've got some of their uh, chillers here. Nothing as large as maybe that Daikin one, but they've got some stuff here. Okay. After lunch.
We'll come back after lunch. Not right now. Not right now. I feel way better after a lunch and some break. It that just kind of quiet time. Look at all these people, man. Just look at them. Look at all these people. Just so many people. How used to that many people? All right, I uh, see a chiller. You know, surprising to me is they've got a screws. You know, I really would have thought they'd have brought centrifugals out here. Here we go, 200 ton YVWH, dual screw. 1234ZE for the 550. Okay, so, she got it. So, positive pressure screw. Okay. CYK, CYK, compound centrifugal heat pump. Okay. I haven't seen one of those in the wild. I wonder if that's a new series. The heat pump YK. It looks like a nice machine overall. I don't have any major complaints. It's a screw that moves water in the refrigerant. It works. Let's go say hi to the carrier boys. I got some other stuff to play with, but this is the 19 MV. Looks like a mag bearing centrifugal. Yeah, mag bearing centrifugal by carrier. Everybody's coming out with their own mag bearing stuff, man. They got to compete with that Danfoss market. But see, that's the problem. It's the problem with turbo floors. They don't really scale that large in tonnage. And so everybody's having to develop their own mag bearing tech in order to hit that larger market. And there's absolutely a market for it. If, if you're not getting yourself involved and up to speed as much as you can with mag bearing stuff and i'm gonna have some more content i'm gonna have a whole thing on mag bearing technology eventually when i have time to get to it but if you're not you're just trying to find some way to invest in that you're gonna really want to look who's right next door to carrier carlisle all right I'll show it to you over my shoulder, but Carrier did a pretty decent job showing up for the chiller side, chiller community. They've got some pretty nice machines. Got the mag bearings, some screws. They got all the stuff, but uh, they got a little touchy with all the film and camera. Anyway, I'll show it to you like this, that way you can see it, and then we'll we'll move on. Let's go to Copeland. Copeland booth is interesting. You know, they've got their uh, semi-hermetics up there and the cutaways. Cutaways are always real neat. I do want to go to the north side. I'm going to save the actual filming, shooting, all that for tomorrow. Hope you're enjoying this. Hope this is actually showing you kind of what you can expect, what the experience is like, kind of what the feel is. I'm really focusing in on the industrial side of things. So and that's some really good ones over here. So I'll give you a sneak peek into tomorrow. I'm really hoping the Danfoss people got turbo cores. And we got multi-stack. See who's hanging around this joint. Yep, you're welcome. What's up, brother? What's up? How you doing, man? How are you? How are you doing? What's up, man? I tell you, this is an exhausting event. If you come to this, come. It's something you can walk a lot in and just be prepared for a lot of people. But it's a ton of fun. I do recommend having done this at least once at some point. And that was really the recommendation to me. Oh, my God.